Hello and welcome. This is going to be just a quick video today. I'm going to talk about two things. One is calculating uh, your income tax liability from a progressive tax schedule, uh, meaning one like this, this is one I actually took from a video I made a couple of years ago uh, for calculating a person's income tax based on the U.S. federal tax rates. This was for 2022 married filing jointly. It's changed a little bit, but the basic idea is that, you know, uh, starting from zero, you get taxed at 10%, then starting from some number above that, you get taxed at a higher rate, and basically as, as you hit additional bands, your income above that gets taxed at a higher rate. Um, but but it's not that, you know, if you get over $83,550, then all your income is taxed at 22%. It's only the bit that goes above that. Um, so there, there's some, co some complexity in calculating that. The other thing that's going to tie in with that that I want to talk about is automation and some of the benefits of automation, because partly the reason that I'm talking about uh, calculating income tax today is because this came up in the FMWC round this weekend and was part of the reason that uh, that I was able to win that, because uh, I had a sneaky, fast way to calculate income tax. So let's talk about automation for a second. You, you might have seen something like this excellent XKCD cartoon, Is It Worth the Time? How long is, does it make sense to spend automating a task before you're spending more time than you would have saved? And there's a chart according to how often you do the task and how much time you shave off. Um, you know, if you if you spend if you save five minutes on something that you do 50 times a day, it's worth spending months automating it because you'll save time. But if you I don't know whatever if you spend 30 seconds on it once a week, then any more than two hours uh, automating it would be would be a waste of time. And this is a good sort of first order lens to look at automation through. Um, but as someone who does a lot of automation in my professional life, I will say uh, there's a couple of things missing from this, part of which I, I don't really want to talk about today. There's stuff around, you know, auditability, reproducibility, reliability, um, you know, making fewer mistakes, that kind of thing, if you automate a process. But the thing that I'm more interested in right now is that not all time is worth the same. Um, and specifically, one of the big benefits in my mind of automation is the ability to move time from a time when you're really busy, when everything is a crunch, to a time when things are quiet. Uh, so that, you know, the classic examples of this are, you know, if you're, if you're an accountant, uh, you know, anything to do with like month-end reporting, month-end close, uh, if you're, um, if you're like a, a, a tax accountant, you know, the tax year-end, uh, you know, I've I've worked on compensation planning most of my career. The calendar year end is a crazy busy time for me. If you can do something, even if it takes you three hours to save two hours of time on a task later, but the three hours can be in a quiet time in June, and it saves you two hours at a really busy time at the end of the year, or, you know, you, you work more hours during the month, but then it means that you don't have to work until midnight to get month end closed done on time, then that, that might still be worth it. Um, and that's that's sort of the context for uh, for today. So anyway, uh, that's that's by way of background. This was for, I, I was thinking about this for this week's FMWC challenge, which they told us was going to involve kind of financial planning for an individual and thinking about um, their income tax, among other things. And so I thought, okay, it would be helpful to have a Lambda ready uh, to calculate the, uh, a person's income tax based on a schedule of, uh, of brackets and rates because you know, it's not a trivial calculation and it is very likely to come up in this question, which it did. So let's talk about it. You, uh, you can go check out my, uh, my short for a very uh, speedy introduction to this. It goes through this method and a couple of others as well. But the idea is, okay, you need to split the income, in this case the 140,000, uh, between the different brackets. So the, the logic here is uh, you take either the top of the bracket or your income, whichever is higher, and you subtract from that the bottom of the bracket. And if that goes negative, it means that you're above your income level, then you just zero it out. So you take the max of that and zero. But if that's positive, then that's the amount that you need. So in other words, for the brackets where you're above the top, it'll just give you the top minus the bottom. So this 20,550 minus zero is 20,550. 83,550 minus 2550 is 63,000. But then when you hit the margin, instead of subtracting 83,550 from 178,150, you subtract it from your income because that's lower uh, and that gives you the rest of your income. So this just splits 140,000 total into <clears throat> 
pardon me, into what falls in each bracket. And then you can just calculate the tax on that by multiplying the two together and adding them up. Uh, so how do you how do you lambdify that? Well, first of all, this is what it looks like when it's done. Uh, so I just wrote a, a lambda called tax calc that takes an income tax, uh, a string of lower bounds, and a string of rates, or a string, I should say, an array, because <laughs> string is exactly the wrong term, technically speaking. Uh, so what, what does that lambda look like? So first, you give it the input. So I'm interested in providing income, a lower range of bracket, and a rate. And then this is what I want to do with it. First, I'm going to calculate an array that is the high end of the brackets. And that's going to be, uh, I'm going to uh, first drop the first of the of the lower bounds. So in other words, I'm going to drop this zero and shift everything else up. And then at the top, I'm just going to put in income. Um, so what does that look like? It just looks like this. Uh, let's keep the formatting nice. And then this. Now, you know, in theory, the upper bound is infinity, uh, but it works just fine to use your income as the upper bound as long as you don't let it go negative. So then you can just say this minus this, uh, and then just the max of that and zero gives you what uh, what can be what can be in that band. So that gives you the, the high bracket, then you figure out the in-band, and that's going to be if your income is below the low end of the bracket, then zero. If your income is above the high end of the bracket, then take the high end of the bracket, otherwise take your income and subtract the low end of the bracket from that. Uh, so there's there's a little more if, because you can't, when you're applying the calculation to a whole range at a time, you can't do, you can't wrap it in a min or wrap it in a max, because, well, let me just show you, if I say max of this minus this, it just collapses it down to a single number. Uh, whereas what you want is to make a row by row calculation. Uh, and so the way to kind of force it to be a little more careful about that is just to, to wrap it in ifs. So we say, if the income is greater than the high bracket, then we take the high bracket, the, the high end of the bracket, otherwise we take the income, subtract from that the low end of the bracket, that gives you, uh, then it's, it's zero if you're, um, if your income is below the low end of the bracket. So like here, your income is 140,000. So with a bracket starting from 178,000 and on up, it's all going to be zero. Uh, and then you just multiply your income in the in the band by the rate, sum it up, uh, and that's your lambda. And then you can copy that, put it into the name manager uh, as tax calc, and then you can just call tax calc and give it the three arguments in uh, in that order. And so what does that look like when it comes to when it comes to the case, this one I had to adapt a little bit because uh, it presented it as, you know, you get $10,000 of non-taxable income and then the first $10,000 of your taxable income is taxed at 10% and so on down. So, you know, this this thing of like, these are our text like from A to B and need to be converted into numbers to work with, that's a kind of pretty standard part of the FMWC challenge. The way I worked around the non-taxable income was just to say, okay, so again, remember that my inputs are the lower bound and the rate. So I just said, starting from zero, you pay 0%. So I just added in another row there. And then starting from 10,000, you pay 10%. And then I just, each one here is just $10,000 plus the upper end of the range below, uh, or plus the lower end of, of this range. So this is the first $10,000, zero to 10. So I add 10 to that to get 10,000. Then 10 to 20 means it really starts at 20 because you're adding 10 and so on down. Um, and as it turned out in this question, you had to uh, you had to apply inflation to the tax brackets. So the, the tax brackets all went up by 3% every year. But the nice thing about having a, a sort of dynamic array friendly setup for this is, so I just calculated a tax inflation here that was just you know, the one plus the tax inflation rate, which is 1.03 to the power of year number minus one. So in other words, in the first year, it's one. And then when the second year kicks in, it goes 1.03 and so on across. Uh, and then my calculation for the tax was just, uh, I gave these gave these names. So this was uh, bracket lower bound, BRLB, and this was bracket rate, BR rat. Uh, and then you can just say, here's your income. Here's the lower bound bracket multiplied by the inflation. And here's the rate. And it calculates the tax. And so again, 
you know, this is this is a very sort of canned example. Okay, I know that in two hours I'm going to have to calculate a model that involves income tax. Well, if I can spend 10 minutes beforehand writing a lambda that calculates income tax, maybe that saves me two minutes during that critical period. But it applies exactly the same to if I'm going to get a bunch of, you know, month-end data, year-end data, annual reporting, uh, compensation planning, whatever. If something is going to become available at this time and then as quickly as possible, I'm going to have to do A, B, and C with it. Then setting up a bunch of automations by having custom lambdas, by having refreshable Power Query queries by having VBA, whatever. Uh, it it doesn't need, like it doesn't even need to meet the basic threshold of automating this takes less time than just doing it by hand. It's enough to say automating this allows me to transfer time from that really crunchy period uh, when I have no time into this other period when things are quiet and I have. Um, and you know, like I said, the FMWC is just a, a little sort of microcosm of that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk more about automation in another video later on, and I'm going to talk much more, much sooner, uh, about lambdas. I and a few other collaborators uh, uh, were planning uh, a sort of series of videos to introduce introduce lambdas, starting from the basics, how to write them, and, and kind of build up to. Uh, I've been promising for ages to share my uh, my esports lambda collection, uh, which I will do. Uh, but I also want to kind of teach you teach you some of what you need to to understand those to be able to adapt them to what you need that kind of thing. So that I don't want to make any overly specific commitments, but that's coming soon, probably in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll get started. All right. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.